Father, we are so grateful to you for this time, Lord. Thank you very much for bringing all of us uh, through this platform together to study your word and to especially to learn about you, Lord. Lord, we want to hear your voice as your servant, servant teaching us, Lord. Open our hearts and minds and help us that we may be able to receive and perceive your word so that we may experience you more intimately as never before, Lord. The time we are spending together in this one hour may be a time of bl blessing for us. And may the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, so uh, today let us see if we can complete this section. We are in the sec in section nine. Uh, sorry, so section ten of our uh, booklet uh, titled "The Christian," and we have been going through the uh, the commonly called Lord's Prayer because prayer is something that Christians uh, certainly engage in. And uh, we'll understand what that prayer means for us, uh, how it uh, how it connects with our present day situations. Even though uh, Jesus Christ did have um, a reason to address the the Jews, because Matthew is written to the Jews primarily, that is, that is his audience. And so I'm hoping that Praveen will bring some thoughts on it uh, with regards to the context of Jesus addressing the Jews and how that translates into uh, this particular prayer. So I'm going to pick up from where we left off last time and uh, we are going to question 17, section 10, question 17. As usual, we'll read and then I will make some comments. Uh, hopefully that will come up on the screen for you. You can follow along with me as I read. All right. We'll just wait for a moment. Uh, just, a, just a second. Yeah. This section, uh, there are some or this particular question has some important uh, things to mention. So we might take a little extended time to talk about it. Uh, the question is uh, moving to the fifth petition in the Lord's Prayer, as we call it. Uh, what is meant by the fifth petition? And the petition is forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. That is the uh, question. What does it mean? Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Uh, is it going to take time, Praveen? Uh, ah, there you are. Okay. Uh, so, let's read the answer then. The answer says, we pray that a new and right spirit will be put within us. We ask for the grace to treat others, especially those who harm us, with the same mercy we have received from God. We remember our need to turn humbly to God daily for our own forgiveness. We know that our reception of that forgiveness can be blocked by our unwillingness to forgive others. We ask that we will not delight in doing evil or in avenging any wrong, but that we will survive all cruelty without bitterness and overcome evil with good, so that our hearts will be knit together with the mercy and forgiveness of God. That is how the answer reads. There are some thoughts that we need to sort of elaborate here. Uh, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. It is obviously 
a teaching that is kind of revolutionary. The normal human understanding would be that uh, you hurt those who hurt you. Right? That is the worldly, uh, you know, ethic that you not forgive others, but you are actually getting even with the others, right? That is how uh, human society functions today. But Jesus is actually bringing something that is going to uh, cause, you know, quite a bit of stir in, in, in you know, and putting it, uh, putting it on its head by saying that you shouldn't take revenge, but you should actually forget. So the reason for this request is that he is asking us to imbibe of a new spirit, uh, a, a spirit that God, you know, the Jesus Christ brings. And I think this is something that uh, is in one sense quite unique to the Christian faith, that in Christianity, we uh, actually forgive those who offend us, right? So it goes on to say that uh, that those who harm us, we must treat them with the same mercy we have received from God. So now God begins to tie up this behavior of ours with how he, you know, deals with us. He extends to us forgiveness. And then he wants us in turn to forgive others, right? Uh, so here he's also helping us to understand something which, uh, which is, which is very important, and that is, we need to be deeply aware of our own imperfection. So when he says forgive others, he's also telling us, you are also to blame in one sense. You are also you know, offenders. And if you have been forgiven, then not only, not only that you have no right to take any kind of vengeance towards others, but you must also forgive. So, so he's introducing a new way of thinking, a new understand, a new spirit that we must have, and also helping us to be introspective, how can, I mean, uh, the fact that we ourselves are, are uh, you know, uh, imperfect and we need to be forgiven. Now, uh, there is one statement which is probably going to be uh, one of those that will uh, cause some bit of debate. And I will mention the statement and I'll just come back to it in a moment. Notice it says, we know that our reception of that forgiveness can be blocked by our unwillingness to forgive others. Uh, here Christ is saying, if you don't forgive, if you don't extend forgiveness, then that can block God's own flow of forgiveness to us. That's, that sounds a bit uh sort of uh, un unchristian <laughs> uh if i can use that uh, phrase but let me come back to that because we need to unpack that a little bit i'll make a few more comments of the statements here uh, uh, one of the one of the uh, part of the answer reads we ask that we will not delight in doing evil or in avenging any wrong uh, but that we will survive all cruelty. In other words, this is saying that if you are unforgiving, if, if you are revengeful, then it leads to our own harm. It will only harm us. And so Jesus is, is expecting for us to be self-protective by actually forgiving. Sounds like a contradiction, but it is not. Jesus is saying, you are actually doing yourself a favor if you extend forgiveness and not avenge uh, yourself, you know, from the offense of the others. Uh, sounds that it, it sounds as though it is quite unfair that uh, Christ would expect for us to behave in that particular manner. But that is the new ethic that Jesus Christ uh, 
is bringing and it go in it far exceeds the old covenant laws and so jesus is uh, showing that the old covenant is fading away and he's bringing in this new ethic into our lives one more thought before i go back to that previous uh, uh, you know uh, contradiction that we might we might think it is but it says here uh, without bitterness and overcome evil with good so that our hearts will be knit together with mercy and forgiveness of god our hearts will be knit together so this whole aspect of forgiving others is actually a transformation of the heart god and you know even the prophets predict that one day we will have a heart of flesh and this is what uh, is ultimately the the whole you know what do you say forward looking perspective of the new covenant that our the the transformation of the heart takes place all right so those are some thoughts that we can think about but i want to go back to this thing about um uh, that if we don't forgive uh that god himself will not forgive us i don't know how that strikes you but that to me it strikes as um slightly problematic it almost seems like that god's forgiveness is conditional and the question is is god's forgiveness to us conditional or does he have unconditional love towards us right so that's a question that i think we need to explore and let's take a, just a few moments to do that um if we say that god will forgive only if we forgive then then god has placed a condition for his forgiveness and that is a problem because what is happening is by our unforgiveness we are actually changing god's very nature of love if god is love conditional love uh uh i noticed They're losing you bas sorry they are losing you yes i i noticed that uh, it's freezing a bit uh am i am i audible now yes you are okay i think i'll just continue and let me see if uh, if any time if it's long periods of time just take over praveen okay so let me go back to this aspect of uh if we don't forgive god will not forgive if that is the case then we with our action are actually changing god's very nature of love we are changing him from mercy to unmercy from loving to unloving right so that, that that's that's how it comes across uh um uh, now also the question is if we are not going to receive forgiveness because we haven't forgiven there's another problem can we ever forgive somebody perfectly uh do we struggle with forgiveness or forgiving others and if we don't forgive others perfectly that that means have we lost god's forgiveness that's another contradiction that that can come about if we take the statement the way it is literally written then there is a problem now there is another problem if we receive forgiveness only after forgiving then salvation our salvation then is dependent on our works right we are actually working towards being saved that's another problem uh and so one more thought is if god has already forgiven us in jesus christ then why is god saying that you know i will not forgive if you don't forgive so i hope you see the various problems that this can happen that that this can uh, sort of generate so what does it mean when god says uh i will forgive if only you forgive i'm going to go to matthew chapter 6 now and reading from uh, matthew chapter 6 because jesus elaborates this particular point once again let's just look at it the way jesus puts it <clears throat> matthew 6 let's read in verse 
So, uh, verse 14, Jesus says, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Sounds very dire, isn't it? Uh, sounds like I just explained to you, very conditional. But is God's love conditional towards us? That's the question we have to ask. And I think the problem is in the way we interpret what Jesus has said. The way Jesus puts it, I'll give you two thoughts on this. And then I think we can open it up for some discussion because I think this is an important point. Um, the way Jesus is uh, sort of, you know, teaching about this, is what we call an exaggeration. Uh, it's, this is an example of exaggeration, the way, uh, uh, the way you know, Jesus puts it. Okay, I must be careful I don't <laughs> shake my table, all right. Now, you notice that uh, in some other scriptures, Jesus says, if your eye, you know, sins gouge it out. Or if your hand commits an offense, cut it off. Right? Uh, Jesus also says, when you pray, go privately and into a room to pray. Right? He also says, the left hand should not know what the right hand is doing. But did you notice, I mean, uh, are these literal? Can we take this literally? Uh, there is a problem if you take it literally, then many of us won't be having hands or legs, right? There'll be a problem. So Jesus is using what we would call uh, an exaggeration to show the importance of what he is trying to teach. What he's saying with regards to forgiveness is that, an un that a forgiving spirit is very important. And he is exaggerating it in such a manner to show its seriousness. That is, if we want God to forgive us, then we must have the same attitude of a willingness to forgive others. You know? So the question is, how can you want forgiveness from God and but still remain unforgiving? You see, you introduce a contradiction. If you want God to forgive you and you remain unforgiving, we are introducing, an, uh, uh, what do you call it? We are introducing a uh, contradiction in this, in this equation, all right? Uh, we, in one sense, are becoming hypocritical. In other words, it's like saying, I will keep murdering others, but I don't want to be murdered. So there is a, a bit of a contradiction there. So Jesus uses these words that, God will not forgive you. It's expressed in a, con in a conditional way for the purpose of exaggeration, right? The aim is not that God will not forgive you because there is no condition God places for forgiveness. The aim is to encourage us to forgive, right? And, and elsewhere, I think the Apostle Paul says, forgive, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Now here it is expressed un unconditionally. We are supposed to do as the Lord does. Just as the Lord has no condition to forgiveness, we don't place a condition to forgive. Okay, so that is one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is what uh, David Torrance, uh, one of the brothers of the Torrance, Torrances uh, who are theologians, uh, especially Trinitarian theologians. The way he puts it is saying that if we don't forgive, what we are actually doing is blocking God's forgiveness to us. Because the nature of grace, the nature of forgiveness is for it to freely flow. In other words, it is freely received and it has to be freely given. Right? Uh, it has to be flowing into us, his grace, just as it has to be flowing out of us, uh, 
grace towards others. What he's trying to say is this, that an unforgiving attitude hinders receiving of God's grace. So the problem is in receiving. It's not that God is not willing to forgive, but we are unable to receive because an unforgiving spirit. We are in one sense blocking God's grace to flow into us. Uh, it is just like what the what uh, John talks about, and I'm going to go to the epistle of John. Uh, this is 1 John chapter 4. Uh, and reading from verse 16. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 16, it says, And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Verse 17. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. Okay, let me also read verses 19 and uh, 19 to 21. It says, we love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have not, who, whom they seen, cannot love God whom they have not seen. Verse 21, and he has given us this command, anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. What is it, what is it, uh, what is John telling us? That if we say we love God and hate our brothers, then there is a problem. That is not possible. There is a contradiction there. That cannot happen. That is not real. All right. It's very interesting in verse 17, it says, this is how love is made complete. This is how love is made complete. In other words, you complete the circle that just as God loves us, we have to love others. Just as God has forgiven us, we have to forgive others. If we don't complete that circle, we live in a contradiction and hence we are broken the circle and we have blocked the grace of God coming into our life. So we cannot take what Jesus said literally because the way Jesus said it may seem a bit alarming, but it is not. Uh, it is not that God will not forgive us. In one sense, he's already forgiven us in Jesus Christ. But we are unable to receive that forgiveness just as if we receive God's love and don't love others, then we have broken the chain. And that's where the problem is. If God tells Peter, you must forgive 70 times seven, how much more will he be willing to forgive us? I mean, does God violate his own standard? Does he tell us to, to live by a particular standard and he violates the same standard? Gary Dedo, our, uh, our um, president of our seminary, he said it this way. Hearts closed toward neighbor are also closed toward God. Hearts closed toward neighbor are also closed toward God. In other words, we cannot experience the fullness of God's forgiveness if we remain unforgiving. That is what is meant. I've taken some time to do that because I feel that this is a Trinitarian perspective that we bring. Because we cannot violate God's love. God is love. He can never stop being love. We don't change God's nature of love by our own for unforgiveness. He will continue to forgive. But the problem is with us. We have blocked that forgiveness. Let me open it up for some thoughts here. I hope I uh, was clear enough. Um, should, yes, we forgive, should we forgive others only when they ask for forgiveness or even otherwise? Well, again, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, uh, that is, again, a problem that we, we introduce into the scriptures. Uh, some people say, if, on, if only we repent, we have to forgive, right? Uh, only when we repent, God forgives us. If we don't repent, God doesn't forgive us. That's, that's how it is put. But uh, the way I see it is this. 
when has god forgiven us the scriptures say that jesus christ died for us when while we were still in our sin okay. which means to say even before we knew what sin is forget about asking for forgiveness christ forgave us so in other words our the obligation to forgive to answer your question anil is not uh only when the person asks for forgiveness yeah right? after that we know as a lifestyle that is the way we live our lives good thanks okay any other thoughts on this particular aspect no uh, i want to say something yes surya murthy go ahead see by reading the scripture we don't forgive somebody we have been in the church for so many years we forgive because it is automatic the spirit in us works with us it automatically forgives okay so <coughs> yes nagar sir <laughs> well uh, your neighbor need not ask you to forgive you the uh, forgiveness uh, comes becomes automatic because yes. because yes. the holy spirit works with us because the holy spirit works in us always we forgive automatically that is my that is how i look at it okay but see yes. when you want to forgive somebody you may say are idiot you may say something idiot like that i am not able to Still forgive what happened okay yes all right uh, so what suri murthy is saying is that uh, you know we don't wait for somebody to come and ask you for forgiveness the spirit in us prompts us to forgive automatically is that right suri murthy yes sir yeah it has become part of our nature right well i hope it does become part of our nature because i know something for sure I, yeah i was about to say that it, we it should become a part of our nature and yes we should be forgiving automatically but i think in a heart of heart we know that we really don't do that we still hold grudges and so on right <laughs> oh my and uh, it happens in the church <laughs> okay the condition the condition which jesus puts that he will not forgive if you don't forgive is only a way of incentive incentive yes. to forgive okay <laughs> yeah what we are looking at it yeah okay that's nice yeah one one of the good ways to look at it yes right but yeah but it is certainly not that god will not forgive because his very nature is forgiving right uh, berty uh, you have a thought go ahead yes can you hear me yes we can uh i would like to add to what suryamurthy just mentioned that uh, as we grow in christ we have the spirit of christ in us which uh, uh, reminds us to forgive and reminds us of his ways and we are growing in maturity but could you throw some light as he like we have forgiven but what does it what does the scripture mean when it says go to your brother and tell him that uh, he has offended you and uh, you know even uh, it, you have not offended him but he has offended you and uh, like if i can understand what surimuthi said the holy spirit in us tells us to forgive and we are forgiving and uh, you know we uh, we are encouraged to forgive and other things. but what does it mean to go to your brother uh, could you throw some light on it okay i uh, presume that you are referring to matthew 18 uh where it says go to your brother and uh, you know and discuss the offense and then of course it gives you other options also in case the brother doesn't uh, respond how to solve the dispute how uh, to solve the dispute yes solving the dispute what what i understand there is uh if you 
uh, feel that somebody has been offended uh, or the other way around, if you are also offended. But yeah, here, yeah. I think Christ in many ways puts the responsibility on us. If we feel somebody has been offended by us, what has happened is a relationship has been affected, right? It has brought a barrier in the relationship and the relationship is going to be affected. Now, to repair that damage to the relationship, something has to be done. Uh, we have to clear up that block that is uh, that is affecting the relationship. So, uh, Jesus Christ, you know, brings in this mechanism where he says the best way to do it is to go to the person himself, to go to the uh, the, the, the 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 person who has offended or who is offend being offending. Don't go to somebody else. Don't go to the third person because you're only going to complicate matters. Right? And don't go and start gossiping about this person. So Jesus is saying you have to restore a relationship. And so, uh, in, and in one sense, Jesus Christ himself, uh, what do you say, personified that. When we offended God, Christ came to us in the incarnation. And he reconciled with us. And so he is actually saying what he himself has done. All right. So it is basically to repair that damage because relationships, I think we know by now, are something which we hold as a very primary aspect of our, uh, of our Christian lives. God says you must forgive. Otherwise, you will not receive forgiveness. Uh, let us remember that God is not that he is going to stop forgiving us, that he suddenly changed from love to hate. That doesn't happen with God. God's nature of love never changes. Uh, it is the problem is with us. We are blocking God's forgiveness and his grace flowing into us. In my idea of opinion, God's character is forgiving. His character itself, forgiving others. And he expects us to be his children. We should learn how to forgive others. That's the most important thing I ever think of. It. Generally, in my opinion, no offender will know that he is offending anybody. The realization will not be there in the person who is offending. He thinks others are offending him. So he always points his finger towards others. So they are not realizing what they are offending. Ah. Only God can open their eyes where they are offending. For that, Hello. by our mouth saying something, exaggerate or whatever, they will take the wrong point, wrong tense, wrong uh, what will call sound, tone, and all these things only. So who is the solve? Who can solve this problem? Only God. So we all can pray together to open their eyes what they are doing. If normally normal prayers are not going well enough, fasting prayers are important. That's what 70 elders learn from Jesus Christ when they are not able to drive away the evil spirits, certain evil spirits. Jesus advises them, these are very strong spirits. So it will go by fasting and prayer only. So we may have to take that decision as whole church or individual. That's what I feel. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Joe, for your thoughts. <clears throat> I particularly uh, appreciate what you said, that God's very nature is forgiving. Yes. So you can never stop him from forgiving you. Yes. <laughs> Uh, nobody has the power to stop God's forgiveness. Yes. Right. Uh, but the unfortunate thing is, uh, we may we may not receive it. God's forgiveness is always available, but with our attitude of mind, we may not be able to receive it and experience the fullness of it. Yes. True. But it, it, it's it's like um, parent and child's relationship. We say, if you do this, I am not going to do this. If you are not going doing, if you are not listening to my word, I will not do this. We will say, if you are not uh, doing 
the work what i said or uh, if you are not looking in the same perspective i'm having you are not going to get these things a parent says does it really mean that uh, you don't want to give food or don't want to kill here or kick here or whatever no it's a parent relationship ship we are building with god and us it's not we started starting point is god because he stretched his hand right we started helping us yeah so i think that we should not think that i haven't forgiven somebody so i'm going to be killed it's not the matter does doesn't mean that yeah the example between father and child is very important a parent and child uh, because the parent is saying it as an expression not literally and not that yet. is what that to, is what we need to understand to about give the some, to give some scare or pressure or something like that yes yes i think that is well well put uh, joe thank you for that uh, so we have to be careful how we read scripture if we take yeah. everything literally then that becomes a problem as yes, the single word itself having so many meanings yes not doing it going away leaving it everything will come up in that uh, same word right okay thank you good very good any other thoughts on this subject otherwise we'll move on to the next question i felt that uh, this was uh, uh, necessary for us to discuss it so that we clear up any misunderstandings on the scripture and especially on the nature of god pravin you had any thought especially when we talk about forgiveness as we have already discussed a little but i would like to bring a, another small dimension into that uh, we need to understand the nature of the gift that we have received and especially the nature of forgiveness uh, and we need to learn how to receive also and uh, receiving forgiveness actually does not complete by just accepting the thought that god is not angry with me anymore that reception would complete only when we are able to extend it to other what i meant by that is uh, we receive something what is the point if you are not able to experience it you can uh, love and forgiveness and these are such a thing especially the aspects in the relationship these we cannot experience unless we give it to others unless we give something to others we don't understand the joy of giving unless some uh, unless we give uh, we forgive somebody we won't be able to understand what it is to be forgiven so the best way to receive forgiveness is ex extending it to others in other uh, if i put in other words it is like you know the uh, the reception of forgiveness is not complete until we extend it to others so once we extend we would we, we can say we can receive it is more like a water what happens if you store water so water gets stagnated and it won't be useful for anything it should be uh, flowing continuously and uh, jesus also says our hearts will be like a fountain of waters where uh, he when he comes into us the spirit as he was talking about holy spirit the love also is like this it is not like a cup where we can keep fountain from fountain water always goes out it won't come inside so the forgiveness the forgiveness that god gives is such a thing and as much as we spend it will be increasing so as much as we give to others we would be able to experience better heights of god's forgiveness if you are not giving spending or giving forgive sharing giving forgiveness to others you okay. would be able to uh, understand the better or depths of god's forgiveness so best way to experience the depths of god's forgiveness is extending it to others and one example jo moses brought and i would like to take the same example a little more further <coughs> he brought forth a uh, parents and children uh, analogy uh, analogy uh, i'm going to be a parent before i didn't become yet but uh, mm -hmm. i can experience what it is and i'm truly really telling i don't know uh, whether my child is going to be good or bad whether he, the child is going to uh be a very good person or is going to become a terrorist i really don't know but, <laughs> but i can tell you for sure before they have done anything else or anything before they have done anything good or before they have before they have done anything bad 
I already started loving the baby ch child, and uh, I all I am already very excited and proud of that child. I guess all of you might have gone through it. Most of you have gone through it. The very reason we we step we take to give birth to the baby or bring the baby into the world is a sign of saying the sin. Uh, sorry, the offenses you are going to commit for your lifetime, I have already forgiven. So God bringing us into this world itself is a sign to say whatever the sins we are going to commit in our lifetime. He has already forgiven because forgiveness in God's ear here is not just an action that we are doing. Forgiveness has become a character, nature, and an attitude. That is the very reason God brought forth us into the creation. He knows when He brought Adam into the world, He is going to commit sin. He has foreknowledge, and millions of people are going to commit their sins. He knows all of them. And but when he created Adam and uh, breathed uh, life, breath of life in his nostrils, he has already forgiven, forgiven them. That's why Scripture says the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. He set the remedy first, and then he created us. He forgave us first, and then brought us into this world. So, uh, when should we forgive? We need to take the example of God before an offense even committed, and before even somebody. Come, come to us and say sorry or repent about it. Jesus set a great example about it. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So yeah. this forgiveness is not just an action. It is uh, a nature, character, and an attitude. And God desires that we should grow to that level. And we can experience the forgiveness and this in the level of nature and character only when we start practicing Extending forgiveness to others. Yeah, that's that's what. That, that's, a, that's a good point. In fact, it reminded me of uh, what we normally, you know, uh, say. Uh, have you heard of the saying? If you don't use it, you will lose it. Right? You probably heard that. In other words, you know, we have muscles. If we don't use our muscles, then it it begins to atrophy, and we will never be able to utilize the muscles we have. And I think very similarly, what Praveen was saying is, uh, we have been forgiven, we have received forgiveness, and if we don't exercise that, we are actually not, not going to experience God's forgiveness. And I think like, uh, like Praveen said rightly, uh, to experience God's own forgiveness, we must be like God and forgive others. So once again, uh, uh, these, uh, these thoughts, I think, are mm -hmm. so beautifully packaged in what Jesus is saying. And of course, the prayer, forgive us as we have forgiven others. So uh, very powerful, you know, just a small statement, but very powerful. It's a very, it's a living dynamic principle of life, right? If we don't live in forgiveness, uh, we then don't experience the forgiveness of God. Any final thoughts on that? And I think time is basically... Uh, Gone on ahead. Yes, very Joe. nicely put, sir. Okay. Very put. nicely put. Yeah, yes, uh, Nelson, go ahead. Uh, Joe will come to you after Nelson. Yeah, okay. Uh, it reminds me, uh, my wife always tells me that, you know, you're not a graceful receiver. <laughs> so it reminds me that we need to be graceful in receiving forgiveness. And be all the more graceful to forgive others. It's very nicely put. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, graceful receiver. That's a, that's a good uh, a good phrase. Joe, you had a thought. Yeah. The thing is, uh, the situation is same as in the saying, love your neighbor as yourself. So we love ourselves a lot. We always want to do certain things and if somebody offended, we, we think he, he should not have offended. So we always think that even though we committed something against somebody, that person should not think that way. So if you want to have something, you should be expecting somebody also having the same problem of doing, but out of love, we should leave him alone. Right. 
Good. Thank you. Anil, go ahead. One last thought. I just thought I mentioned this. I read somewhere that if you are not forgiving and if you are full of bitterness all the time, it's like you drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. <laughs> Good. Good. Yes. <laughs> Yes, well, well put. I think uh, bitterness is like poison inside of us. It only destroys us. <laughs> Absolutely. Very good. Yes. I'm, I'm very happy to know that, uh, you know, we are on the same page as, as far as this is concerned. But uh, as we close, uh, I need to once again just bring it to our attention that uh, uh, let us always recognize what God's nature is. God's very essential nature is love, which means forgiveness is part of that. The manifestation of uh, love is in forgiving. Yeah? And so uh, uh, no one has the power to change that. Uh, it is only we who do ourselves a disservice by not forgiving others. All right. Having said that, uh, we will continue next week with the other questions, but I thought these are very important uh, points to consider. Um, if I can request Franklin Poppins to lead us in a closing prayer at this time. Franklin. Gracious Lord, a loving Father. Lord, we just pause, Father, and give you thanks. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity to learn of your ways, to understand and come to grips. Lord, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for uniting us into a unique fellowship in the triune Godhead. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, Father, for giving us the privilege of knowing and understanding your ways. Lord, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to understand this tough subject of forgiveness. Lord, I realize that sometimes it is just very, very difficult to forgive, Lord. Thank you, Father, for teaching us your ways. Lord, give us a heart, a heart of tenderness, a heart that is filled with your love. And Lord, we will allow your grace to flow into us always. And we in turn, Lord, will allow your love to flow to others. Lord, help us, Father, in all our weaknesses. We ask, Father, that you will be with us and strengthen us and will help us to grow into a deeper and a stronger relationship with you. Lord, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for all of us who are able to join in on this virtual study. Lord, we ask your blessings upon us. And we also remember those who could not join us for various reasons. Lord, be with them, take care of them, and you will equip them too and will help them to grow as your children. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.